Your man is the hidden side of black hair yet again, you know. And you know what happens when it comes to the hidden sides of black hair. You're gonna get a whole leap of powerful, powerful information on nutrition, powerful, powerful information on products for your hair, and even powerful, powerful information on the black hair care industry in the UK. And you know what happens, you know? The people that come with their families, the people that come with their children, and the goddesses, the queens, the empresses are out in full effect. It's a beautiful occasion right here, kings and queens. Come inside with Shakara and see Wagwan. Peace. And now to introduce our next speaker. Our next speaker is actually going to be doing something a bit fun, just like Natasha. So, our next speaker, well, now we're going to be treated, in fact, to a live workshop. Who's been to the Hidden Science of Black Hair before in London? Yeah? Can we hear some noise? Yeah? Do you guys remember the live workshop? All right, okay. So now we're going to be treated to a live workshop on how to make your own hair care products. How does that sound, family? Sound good? All right. So our facilitator is the founder of Pure Goodness Natural Hair and Skin Care, which was born out of her desire to use natural products to better maintain the hair and skin of her young family. After constant disappointment with high street black brands, she embarked on a mission to make products that were not only natural, but also effective. She now has a wide range of products that are free from parabens, mineral oils, sodium laurel sulfate, which can all be drying on the hair and skin. Packed with nourishing natural ingredients, the products have given, sorry, have proven to be highly effective and are natural solutions to the products that a lot of people face and they are available online and in a handful of independent shops. So could we please give a warm round of applause for Sherilyn Dos Santos. Okay, so while she sets up, in fact, sis, do you want me to set up before you start talking? Yeah. Okay, okay let me mic you. Drop my mic again. Can you hear me, everyone? Yeah. Wonderful. So I am so excited to be back at the Hidden Science event. From when I done the first one back in 2018, I think I want to say this is my fourth time. So it's um, really, really heartwarming again to see a lovely full house. Um, and it's actually the first time I've been out in a crowd um, since before lockdown, after having given birth last year. So I feel like really rejuvenated. <laughs> So, I'm going to be teaching you how to make three products. Now, I'm not wearing a watch, and I don't have my phone, so help me keep the time. Um, no, we're good, we're good, right? So, when I started, I started my business, I would want to say about seven years ago, but I started making products well over ten years ago. And as Leah said, it started from, you know, a bit of a disappointment, not finding things that could manage my natural hair. That's when I was a loose natural. Um, I started my lock journey two years ago next week, so here I am with my locks, so now it's a different kind of journey, but yeah, being able to make your own products is so empowering, which is why I really enjoy showing people and teaching people. You know, often we are just sold lots of rubbish, quite frankly, that doesn't work, can cause health issues. So number one, it's about empowering yourself, empowering your children, and just changing the narrative going forward. So the first product I'm going to make is a natural hair and scalp moisturizer. Now here's one I whipped up earlier. So I am going to, just I want you to kind of see how it feels and that. So feel free to put a bit on the back of your hand, send it around the room. 
Now, it's going to have, it's already got a handful of ingredients. Now, the first one is avocado butter. Now, avocado butter, you could do this with shea butter. We have got um, a kit today available for £25, which you'll be able to make the same product. But rather than with the avocado butter, it will have the shea butter. Now, the reason why I'm not using the shea butter is because I would, I would have had to have melted it a little bit, whereas the, this one's a little bit easier to work with. So, the avocado butter is going to add the real moisture to the hair. But what you want also is some hydration. So I'm adding aloe vera. This is aloe vera and seaweed gel. Now, I should say, that was 50 grams of avocado butter. And I'm going to add also 50 grams of avocado and seaweed gel. And I'm kind of just like freestyling it out here. But of course, when you're doing it at home, you don't always have to measure, but we are going to preserve it. So if you, when you're preserving it, you do want to measure to make sure you get the accurate amount of preservative, which I'll talk you through. But I suppose when you've been doing this for a long time, you start to know the quantities. Now, I'm also going to add some castor oil. Castor oil is a wonderful oil to seal in moisture to the hair. Now, it is quite thick, so you don't want to do too much. Some people swear by using castor oil by itself, but I've always found that it works well when it's diluted with a thinner oil. So you have three grades of oils, thin, thick, and um, not thin, medium, and, and thick. And the, basically, the thicker the oil is, is the longer it will take to penetrate, right? So you want to mix that, otherwise it will just sit on top of your hair. I'm going to add a few drops of peppermint. Peppermint is a wonderful stimulant for the scalp. You know, uh, sometimes hair follicles can become sluggish, either to do with time and age or the way the hair is treated. So the essential oils just help to stimulate them. Now, some people can be sensitive to essential oils, so it's always good to do a little patch test on the back of your scalp to see how your scalp responds. But rosemary and peppermint are two of the best ones, and they're the two that we included in the kit. So just a few drops of each. Now, very essential step is the natural preservative. So this preservative that we use is derived from coconut, so it's a natural source. And why it's important to preserve your products is because you don't want any mold or fungus growing. If you don't want to preserve them, then you'd have to store it in the fridge and make sure you're using clean hands every time you apply it, and probably use it within about two weeks. But if you want it to last in your cupboard for up to two years, just 1% of preservative will preserve it. That's all you need. So I say that when I say 1%, for those whose math isn't the strong point, if this was a 200 gram mixture, so if I had 50 grams of, if I had 100 grams of the butter and I had 100 grams of, uh, no, 50 grams of aloe vera and I had 50 grams of castor oil, that's 200 grams in total. So I would need 2 mil, 2 milligrams, not a lot, of preservative. So a little bit goes a long way. So this one's got a very long name, I'm going to try and pronounce it for you. It's called phenoxy ethanol and ethnoglycerin. Yeah? So it's a mixture of glycerin and phenoxy ethanol, and that is derived from coconut. So it's from a natural source, but it's gone through a chemical process. Now, there are people that want 100% natural products, great, but just know that you need to keep it in the fridge. If you want to be able to keep it out or travel with it, go to hot places, then you need to preserve it. And definitely, if you want to sell it commercially, you will have to preserve it, otherwise it just won't pass any testing. So I'm going to eyeball two mil and now next step is a good whisk so regular whisk you might want one at the kitchen or you might want to get one you can get these for about a pound in the pound shop just for your hair product mixtures and you're going to start whisking quite vigorous action now what you could have done or what you could have done you could have heated gently the avocado butter or shea butter or whatever butter you're using in a bain marie do you know what that is? Anyone know what bain marie? Oh, right. a, a little water bath. So you get your pot of hot water, and then you put your, your butter in a bowl and sit it on top with the water boiling underneath. It's not advised to put your oils directly onto the stove, because you can scorch them and you can heat them um, way too much. And with certain butters as well, any oils, if you heat them too much, they lose their good properties. Yeah? So you see, as I'm whisking, you see it's getting nice and creamy. Like I said, if you do melt it, this this process is a lot quicker. But as I didn't melt it, well, it makes it a bit longer. And as it's coming around the room, you'll feel on the, on the, it just melts into your hair, melts into your scalp. The moment you apply it, it just turns to oil. So it's nice and light, suitable if you have locked hair, like myself, on the scalp, yeah, on the scalp of the hair. If your hair is loose, natural, or relaxed, great on the hair. Hmm? Oh, yes, please. So while you're mixing that, I want to do one more thing. Let me just pop it out of the, <laughs> pop it out of the, <laughs> pop it out of the whisk. The hard bits. Um, 
Can I get some for my legs? Of course you can, darling, of course you can. Now, you know what, there's a funny story, actually. When I started, so when I started, now we've got over 20 products in our range, but when I started, I had like two or three. And this was, this was one of them, at Shearlow, which, which is in here. And I gave it, I was giving it to all my friends and, that, and family to test out. You can give it a good whisk with that one. And my friend of mine, she had really severe eczema. And then she contacted me and she said, oh, Sheridan, guess what? That thing is amazing. It's cleared up my eczema. I was like, oh, really? You know, I made it for the hair. And it really gave me a lesson because it showed me again that the natural ingredients are a benefit for hair on the scalp. I mean, all, all hair, because I mean, all skin. Skin on your scalp, skin on your body, it's your skin. So that being said, whilst it's a hair product, feel free to grease your elbows, your legs, your foot bottom. It will, it will do a great job. <laughs> the, second, the second product I'm going to make is... Um, yeah, yeah, no, keep, yeah, just keep, right. keep, keep going, keep going, we want it nice and smooth, it will get there, takes a bit of time, keep going. We're going to make a hair mist, something similar to our moisture mist here. So, why are we doing a, a hair mist? It's really essential to get water on your hair. I know that a lot of us grew up being told, oh, you know, don't get your hair wet, get your hair done on a Sunday, it's meant to last you for a week, two weeks, and we avoided water. That didn't help a lot of us, because really, the hair needs water in order to thrive. So, you know, some of us can't even swim until today because of that, right? So, we don't want to carry on that. We don't want to carry on that. Hair needs water. So, I'm going to make a mist. And no, there's no shade because I'm one of those people, all right? <laughs> yeah? Not a great swimmer at all. So, you want about, let's say, about 70% water to go in there. Again, I'm eyeballing it. And then you want to put... I'm going to take the leave-in conditioner out of here. A bit of your regular conditioner. So whatever you, whatever, you, oops, whatever you use to condition your hair, break into the bag. You want to... Oh, thank you, darling. Chris, are we ready? Oh, yeah, we should be. We should be. I'm not a machine. <laughs> oh, God, she's going to leave me here. She forgot what we were doing this. No, I did. Like so once it's done, let me, see how it's, let me see how it's looking. Lovely, lovely. So what are you going to use? You're going to use the spatula. No, no, you can, you can scrape it out, and then you're going to... You can go on that table. I'm going to pay for this. Pay you later. Oh, you can put it into there. So then, so about 70% water, then we're going to put some conditioner. I'm doing it out of a jar, so this conditioner. If you had it in a squeezy top, you would just squeeze a bit in there. And I want to say about 10% conditioner. Shake that down. Don't worry, I've got clean hands, guys. So you're going to put your conditioner in, and this is just to hydrate your hair. So if you're, again, if your hair is braided or in weave or in wigs, again, we get so used to greasing our scalp, but we forget about the hair that goes down the braid. So I don't know about you, but I know that when I used to wear braids for a long time, I'd take the braid out and I'd be like, oh, my hair's grown, it's fantastic. But the hair was actually very dry. And then what would happen, it would just break off. It was, it was dry, it was damaged, and I would get that bit at the root that was very matted, yeah? Lost a lot of hair. So it kind of counteracts the whole purpose of wearing the protective hairstyle. So you want to be misting your hair daily, every other day, depends on how dry your hair is. So I've put the water and the conditioner, and now, any oil of your choice, I'm going to go for a bit of avocado oil. Avocado is a medium oil, so it's not that thin and it's not that thick, but it has a lot of good fats in there. So that's going to help to nourish the hair nicely. Thank you. And I'm going to put a drop of castor oil. And then you can put a bit of vegetable glycerin. Now, vegetable glycerin is something that we call a humectant. Anyone know what a humectant is? It's something that draws moisture. So like honey, when you put um, vegetable glycerin in your hair, it will draw the moisture out of the environment into your hair, stop it from drying out. But there's a thin line, you put too much in there, it will get very tacky. So a very small amount of vegetable glycerin in your products. I, would, I wouldn't recommend putting honey, again, because um, I don't know what's in the honey, not all honey is pure, so go for vegetable glycerin. We have that in the kit as well. And in the kit you get enough preservative to actually preserve up to five kilo of product. So that little bit of preservative will take you a long way. And now, so we've got the water, the conditioner, and the oils. We want to add our essential oils. And I'm going to go for, again, I'll put a bit of lemongrass. Lemongrass is a really good oil to help with dandruff and dryness on the scalp. Most citrus oils are very good, but you don't want to overdo it with a citrus because a lot of things, they're really great, but it has a tipping point, then it can not be so great. So a bit of lemongrass, and I'm going to put a little bit of rosemary. When it comes to essential oils, 
They all have wonderful, unique properties, but you don't want to um, mix too many together. So I always say go for three maximum. You can be very tempting just to put a bit of this and a bit of that, but they are active ingredients and they do do things. So you don't want to put too many of them because you want to get the real benefit from the ones that you're using. And um, yeah, as my slide, I didn't get to upload it. We are puregoodnesslondon.com. So if you want to see what we're up to online, we sell a lot of products there. Um, in, in social media, Instagram, we are puregoodnesslondon. So please do give us a follow. And you can see I'm giving this mist a good shake. What did I forget to put in it? Preservative. Well, I didn't forget. I was just checking if you're paying attention. <laughs> Wonderful. So it's really important. I can't. Um, I can't overestimate this step. Again, if you, if you, in my family, there's four females, right? So if you know, okay, between us, we're probably going to use this up in two weeks, maybe then you don't need to preserve it, but keep it in the fridge, yeah? But if you say, no, I'm going to have this going for a little while, then do preserve it. And here, you have a wonderful hydrating hairspray, yeah? This you can put on with, in your braids. If you're wearing a wig, get the underneath that wig on your scalp. If you're loose natural, I would say do not try to comb or detangle dry hair. Big mistake. Your hair needs to be slightly damp, slightly moist to be able to do that. And oil alone won't do it. We have the myth that oil will moisturize our hair. So again, I'm going to send this around. So you can, if you want to have a little feel on your skin, on your hair, please do. Mmm, smells lovely. <laughs> yeah, and that's the thing. You always see me rubbing in hair products into my skin because they're just so good. <laughs> so the mist is something that you would you could use daily yeah or you could use every other day but is that would be one of your staple products whereas the the moisturizer might be a few times a week depending on how dry your hair is and the last thing i'm going to show you how to make is a oil to seal your moisture so does everybody know about the lock method of moisturizing hair liquid oil and cream yeah, some do. I'll, as, as I do this, I'll explain for the ones that don't. So again, we kind, I'm going to start with a bit of hemp oil. This is a medium oil. It smells quite, it has a strong smell. Because it's, because it's on, um, hemp, this one is. Because unrefined oils, because they haven't had lots of their properties removed, they will smell quite earthy. So bear that in mind. Some people want, you know, unrefined, but they, they can't take the smell. Sometimes there's nothing wrong with the refined version. Though you've got some of um, the properties removed, it will still be good for you. So don't think that you have to be a martyr going around smelling a bit off because you want to use the unrefined oils. Yeah? So this is a bit of um, hemp. You see, it's nice and rich in colour. And this will be used to, put a bit too much there, to, you can use it to um, stimulate your scalp, so to moisturize, your, to, to just a few bits of oil to moisturize your scalp as a hot oil treatment. Anyone here do regular hot oil treatments? Not yeah, occasionally. They are really, really good for the hair. A lot of people do protein treatments, protein treatments, but actually you need a bit of both because your hair can have too much protein and can get brittle and dry and snap off but this is a nice moisturizing treatment. So what I tend to do is I put the hemp in there already and put a bit of avocado. And the last oil I'm gonna put is the castor, which will, I'll put the least amount in there because it's so thick. So with a hot oil treatment, you can, you know, people, I think gone are the days where you had to spend, you know, half a day doing your hair, washing and, and then the treating and then the, blow dry and if you blow dry or the twist or no you can you can speed it up and one of the great ways to do it is to apply this on before bed put a um wrap your head in cling film you know if you booze you get a plastic cap but if you're not booze like me get cling film wrap up your hair and then put your put your bonnet on so while you're sleeping the product is doing its job if you don't want to do it overnight make sure you put your head scarf on tight though so you don't you know mess up your pillowcase if you don't want to do that, you can um, put it on in the daytime, wear a hat, put a nice head wrap on, go out, do your runnings, you come home, you wash it out. You don't need to be sitting down there waiting for the product to get to work. Because it is all natural, leave it on for four, five, six, seven, ten hours, it will not be harmful to your hair. And I'm going to put rosemary oil in this one. And you may have this in your cupboard. So some of the common oils that people have at home, they have olive oil, they even have sunflower oil. A lot of people are cooking with sunflower oil. They don't know how wonderful that is as well. It's a very light, it's very thin. 
so it'll absorb, it will absorb quite easily. There's nothing wrong with putting that in your mixtures. You can balance it out with a thicker oil like castor oil, but sunflower oil is also a very good one. You heard about the seeds and all the benefits of the sunflower seeds. It's in the oil too. And there you have your wonderful oil that can be used as a hot oil treatment. It can be used to seal in moisture. So as I was saying, with the lock method, liquid oil cream. So the first step would be that spray. Yeah, if you really want to get moisture in your hair, you spray it with a liquid, something that's water-based. Yeah, and then, okay, I'm going to do the LC oil, so I'm going to do the cream, then oil. Some people put the oil than the cream, but I think it works better for me with, well, now I've got locks, so don't do it, but if your hair's out, then please do. So then the, the cream is a leave-in conditioner, something creamy. So after you, when your hair's damp, you want to put some of that cream moisture down your hair, and then you want to seal it in with a little bit of oil. Now that can sound like, oh, a lot of steps and a lot of products, but because these are all natural, there's no build-up, your hair, you'll braid it, you'll twist it, whatever. When you take it out a week later, your hair is still very, very moisturized, yeah? So if you want um, a quick way to, to keep your hair healthy without having to shop around loads and trial and error, it doesn't work, you know, really try to invest. Don't be afraid. You know, it is trial and error when you're making your own stuff, but you can definitely do it. And I encourage you, if you would like to try, I've got the kit here, everything I use to make that whip. Did everyone try the whip, the hair moisturizer? If you like that. Yeah, that one. Oh, no, I set one around already. Oh. Yeah, when we started, one was on earlier. So, yeah, so you can be able to make one, and I'll give you all the instructions, and you can go through. Um, and these, I've already got a few of them today, so do come down. I'm on the store just in front of the DJ on the lower level there, and we have got already made kits if you don't want to kind of make your own, but you still want the goodness, and we've got those same £25. So, I want to say, yes, yeah, any questions? Ah, yes, yes, yes. I'm going to take questions from them first. Should I? No, we'll that. At the end. Yeah. Okay, panel. Sorry, guys. Save your work? questions for the panel. But what I wanted to do, obviously, I've made these products, so now it's time for one of you to enjoy them. So I thought, let's see who was paying attention. Questions. So the moisture mist. So there's three questions. Ah, there you go. Thank you. So I spoke about humectants. What ingredient... Is a, you don't have to tell us what it is, it's something that draws moisture into the hair, but what ingredient is a humectant? And that is for you to receive the lovely hair mist, which is great for locked hair as well. Oh gosh. Oh, oh well, we, well, we're not allowed to shout out, and Leah's gonna choose a person. <laughs> which lady? Yeah. Yep. Well done. Which lady? There? Yeah, she said it, this one. Lovely, so this is yours. Second well question. <laughs> Yes, I love that one. Enjoy. So, next question. I said it's very, very important to preserve your products, especially if you're going to keep them for a little while, longer than a couple of weeks. What percentage, please, don't shout out. And Leah's going to choose. What percentage of um, preservative should you use in your product? Okay. Okay. Well, the people can have that. <laughs> who want to have that? Yeah, does it have that? White shirt, second row. No, I'm sorry, Ooh. darling. Ooh. You right there, waving. You, yep, you, yep. White top. Yep. No, I'm... <laughs> Alright, let's go. Young lady. So, would you like the oil or the this one? This one? There you go. Enjoy, enjoy. And the third question, yes. How often should you mist, oh, I've given the mist away, but it's for the oil. How often should you mist your hair when in braids? Braids, weaves, pro protective styles. Once a day. Yeah, that, that works. I said daily or every other day. Wonderful. There you go. So, thank you guys for your attention. It's been amazing as always. Feel free, if you have any questions, you can come and check me on the store or I'll be back on the panel at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah, don't worry. I've got one of the girls to do it. Yeah, and do come, if you're interested in the kits, come and get yours while they're available. What's your name? Uh, my name? Sherilyn. 
Yeah, I'm okay. Sherilyn. Can and we are puregoodnesslondon.com. Please give us a follow on social media. Go to our website, join our mailing list. Because these workshops, I um, pre-pandemic, I was doing them in person. And we will get back to that space again. So if you want to be one of the first to hear when we're doing them, and we'll be making other things, because I do face care and body care, please do join my mailing list. Thank you, guys. A big round of applause for Sherilyn Dos Santos from Pure Goodness London. OK, last question, sis. What, what time is the panel? OK, so the panel discussion is going to... We're going to go for a break right now. And then the panel discussion, we're going to have one more talk and then the panel discussion. So that should be around half past four. Sherilyn, one last question before we wrap up. Which of the base products, like the raw products, yeah. do you recommend people invest in that you find is most versatile to make other things with? Shea butter. And I say that because I know a lot of people have it, but some people don't really know what to do with it other than using it by itself. But it's very versatile. You can mix it with oils and aloe vera, like you see what I've done today for your hair. And you can whip it, whip it with coconut oil and oils nicely for your body. So I'll say shea butter. It's one of the cheaper ones to get as well, and it's very, very versatile. Thank you, sis. Okay, so everyone, you can go on.